Uh oh. Sounds like we got some marbles in the engine. Not, not a good sound. Well guys, today we're going to be working on my own 2002 Suzuki XL7. And it's got the infamous timing chain tensioner rattle issue. Uh, the truck has 130,000 miles on it and this issue has been getting progressively worse for the last oh, 10,000 miles or so. Uh, it gets real bad at idle, you know, when the oil is hot, you're driving around just, uh, you know, less than 2,000 RPM, it just keeps getting louder and louder, rattling and, well, you got to fix it before the engine grenades, right? Now just to do a complete mechanical diagnosis here, I've installed a mechanical oil pressure gauge just to see when the rattling occurs. And right now at a hot idle we're about, uh, let's see, 10 PSI. You hear the rattle. And now it's quiet. So I've noticed that once the oil heats up, less than, you can actually hear right now, like less than 35 PSI of oil pressure, that timing tensioner starts to rattle. I hope the camera's picking that up. So that's, you know, if you're under 2000 RPM, you'll hear the sound. So, you know, oil pressure gauge, it's always nice to have, especially on an older vehicle. Just in case your, uh, you know, your, your red <laughs> oil pressure light, if that comes on, it's too late. But this thing will at least, uh, you know, give you a heads up ahead of time. So what we're gonna do in this video series is do the fix. We'll do a little research, and uh, hopefully we can get this Suzuki back back on track. Uh, work nice and quiet. Well, first before tearing into the engine here we need to do some research and find out exactly what parts we need what other people have experienced maybe look on forums uh, but here's the technical service bulletin from Suzuki uh, there's the number of the TSV and uh, here's the condition loud chain rattling noise from right front of engine behind the timing cover noise is usually loudest when the engine is started cold uh, in my case, there's a little rattle when it's on a cold start, but then it's really smooth and quiet until the oil really warms up, and then you know you start hearing that marble sound. So the correction here, where the cause of the rattle is, number one, timing chain tensioner not adjusting properly, and uh, the fix is to remove the front timing cover and replace only the number one timing chain tensioner. For removal installation procedures, uh, refer to your manual. Okay. It says do not replace tensioner two or three. Noise from number one tensioner is considered normal for the first five seconds of operation. And it gives you some part numbers there. Tensioner assembly. So that's what needs to be replaced. And I did get one of those right here, that's the part number and I actually got this, it's a Suzuki OEM part made in Japan uh, I got this from partsgeek.com, they uh, are actually pretty good about stocking OEM parts and uh, <clears throat> some other parts here, I guess we'll just go over the parts list right now or the parts that I'm going to put on, I mean you can make this job as thorough or as basic as you want, but I know that plastic timing chain guides are prone to getting brittle, especially in that hot environment in the oil, so I did get both timing chain guides here for the main chain. Now, <clears throat> I guess first we should look at a schematic of the timing chain setup and then see 
you know where these guides go and uh, you know kind of proceed from there and see what other parts you may want to replace while we're in there so going to the second page of the service bulletin they actually show you a picture of where this tensioner is located that's the right side and you know, passenger side of the engine lives right next to the water pump right here so basically if you want to change the water pump this is the best time to do it since the timing cover has to come out for that too so that that's what the tensioner should look like um, and then they give you uh, directions on how to reseal the cover there are no gaskets it's just all um, you know RTV and here's the timing chain setup so let's take a closer look at that got it pulled up right here alright so here's the uh, here's the layout so it's a this applies to the 2.7 liter and 2.5 liter Suzuki V6 dual overhead cam engines uh, they put them in the Grand Vitara's XL7's from 99 to uh, mid 2000's around there so you know wherever there are Suzuki dealerships these things are pretty popular so anyways here's the setup of the chains there are actually four chains total and they have guides and tensioners and all this stuff so this engine was basically designed to be kind of sealed for life unlike a timing belt engine but after going through and seeing all the parts here uh, I think a timing belt might not have been a bad idea here <laughs> you know so let's see so there's a little chain down here drives the oil pump we are not worried about that then the main timing chain that goes from the crankshaft up and over this is bank one this is bank two so first it drives the main chain drives this idler pulley right here on bank one then off of that there's a separate chain for bank one to drive the intake and exhaust camshafts and you can see this chain has its own tensioner its own um, I don't know if this one has a guide but we're not worried about that one either uh, following the main chain then it goes around this idler right here in the middle comes up here now we can see it goes around a bigger pulley that's on the intake camshaft on bank two okay and then there's a smaller chain behind that one that drives the exhaust cam on bank two so we're not worried about the little chain again now after driving all of that this is where the tensioner lives on this side this is the tensioning side so there's a, a tensioning guide right here and there's our guy that's number one timing chain tensioner that's the cause of all this racket now you know the fix uh, by the TSBs to replace just that tensioner um, in this case as a preventative measure I'm going to replace also these two guides right here and right here and uh, here let's show you the the part numbers on those so we already saw the part number of the tensioner itself that's this guy here then uh, number 11 is our timing chain guide number one that's this guy right here and I got these straight up from Suzuki carparts.com you know dealership online <clears throat> they're not that expensive they're about 20 bucks for these little plastic things but the tensioner you could save a few bucks by going to partsgeek.com and getting the OEM one there it's probably a 20 dollar difference this one's about 100 110 dollars so not too cheap but you know at least it's available considering Suzuki doesn't sell car, cars in America anymore and then the smaller guide here number 12 timing chain guide number two there's the part number for that okay and uh, to reseal the cover we'll need a lot of gray RTV sealant an o-ring 
that goes around the water pump. So there's the water pump there. There's just an O-ring and then the cover slides over that. So that's from also from the Suzuki dealer. And then of course the timing cover uh, crank seal. So again, OEM part. And then while we're here, I'm going to install a new thermostat. So I actually ordered an OEM NTC thermostat. It has all the gaskets pre-installed on it, jiggle pin, the whole works. It's a little fancy, you know, it's got a dual valve and the rubber gasket in here which fails on these. So I've replaced it once. Right now I have a stant thermostat in there and I don't think the gasket, you know, it's just metal to metal, but this one's actually rubber. So we're going to put this guy in when we're in there. Obviously we need to drain the coolant, fresh coolant. Um, for the fan clutch, since we'll have that off, um, the seal did leak a while ago and it sprayed all the fluid out and started overheating on, you know, if you're off-roading in low range, you don't have any airflow past the radiator, the fan doesn't turn on, you're going to have issues. So on forums, I've read that you can use this silicone oil, it's actually made for, I guess, uh, radio control model, so our RC cars. I think in the differential to use this, but so it's kind of a viscous fluid. You can get different viscosities. So we'll put that in the fan clutch, see how that works out, reseal that. And of course, it's time for an oil change. So I've always used Mobile One 5W30 synthetic in this engine, and uh, it works great, it doesn't burn any. I mean, maybe a quart for 6,000 miles or something like that. So within normal. Uh, specifications but you know when I bought this truck four years ago at 80,000 miles it was nice and quiet but I knew the timing chain tension issue was was going to come up sooner or later so I've run this and well it didn't didn't prevent anything so but you know might as well put the best oil that you can in these engines that are picky with oil so now that we know our parts where we're going uh, we're going to look up some labor times, procedures, go from there. So now let's do some research on what it takes to change this little tensioner out. What Suzuki recommends, you know, by their service manual, and then on forums there have been a couple of write-ups on how to do this job. But basically labor times, here I'm on all data, and um, basically this job takes the same amount of time as doing a water pump. because. The water pump is under the timing chain cover. The timing chain cover has to come off to replace any of these components. So let's see what our labor time would be for a water pump. Wow. I almost crapped my pants when I saw that one. 14 and a half hours to replace a water pump on this thing. <laughs> and we're not doing the water pump in this job. So I'm just going to hope it lasts another 130,000 miles. Um, yeah, that I mean that's that's the quoted labor time. It's ridiculous. And we, now we get to see why I actually have the factory Suzuki manual here on a PDF file. Well, we're going to see what it takes to to do this job. So let me find the correct page. I'll zoom you in. All right, here we are. Timing chain cover removal. All right, see, disconnect cable, drain engine oil, drain coolant, remove throttle body and intake manifold. And they have a whole section for that. So they say you have to take off the entire upper and lower intake manifold. Okay. Um, then remove the cylinder head covers. Keep going down here, remove cooling fan, remove radiator, remove thermostat cap, remove power steering pump drive belt, remove water pump drive belt, remove power steering pump and bracket, raise vehicle, remove oil pan, uh, rem refer to oil, pan and oil pump strainer in this section, okay. So keep that in mind, then remove the crank pulley bolt, no big deal, remove the pulley, disconnect sensor, remove cover. So, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, 
that, that's what it takes. But in here, you have to keep in mind that these, uh, you know, instructions when they say, for example, remove oil pan and pump strainer in this section. So what does that entail? Let's see here. Uh, uh, oil pan, oil pan, oil pump strainer. Okay, let's see what it takes to remove that. Remove oil gauge, raise the vehicle, remove both front wheels, remove rack and pinion assembly. Holy crap. Remove front differential housing with differential from chassis if equipped. Oh man. See, now you can see where the, those 14 and a half hours are coming from, right? Drain the engine oil, remove oil pan, etc., etc., etc. What a freaking nightmare. Alright, so basically, if we do this by the book, it's going to be a nightmare. We're going to need all kinds of gaskets and reseals, and um, we're just not going there. So, by the book, to remove the valve timing cover, we need to remove the valve covers, and to do that, remove the intake manifold. Um, looking at the engine, there is a gap between the valve covers and the manifold, so you can't remove them completely, but we just need to lift them up a bit so we can get the timing cover out of there. So, um, I'm not going to touch the intake manifold, and we're just going to lift these up a bit and not uh, redo the gaskets. It would be a great time to redo the gaskets, but if they leak, I'll do that uh, separately later. We're just uh, after that timing chain tensioner today. This oil pump, pan, strainer, rack and pinion, front axle removal, um, we're not going to touch that. Basically, the bottom of the timing cover bolts to the oil pan, you know, there's three or four bolts, um, so which we'll just undo those and to reinstall we'll put some RTV seal on there so in this case we don't have to remove the oil pump or the strainer so you know we'll just leave that alone to cut back on labor time and uh, not disturb anything that's working now the radiator fan power steering pump that all does have to come out um, so on the forums, if you uh, get good at this job, you can cut this down from 14 and a half to, I don't know, people said like three hours. I think that's a little optimistic. So I'm shooting for maybe half a day. <laughs> um, but that's where we're at. Let's pull the XL7 in and get to work.